Good day, my scholars. This is my school channel, and my name is Abiola. For this video lesson, you will be joining me to tackle the Jam CPT past question for the subject Mathematics, the year 2008. Do not go anywhere, stay with us, and we will be right back. Back to my YouTube channel. Right here, you will be joining me to tackle questions 1 to 17. So join me as I begin with question 1. Had 110 base 2, 2, 10111 base 2, and 111 base 2. Alright, so if you want to know more about this concept, just check the link in the description below for our topic by topic video explanations. Okay, for the topic number base and the subject mathematics in general okay so let's tackle this question there are actually ways to go about this i'm just going to pick a particular method and stick to it all right so i have i'm required to add this up so i have this right okay then i have this as well okay and i have this remember in this Two, so one plus one that is two plus one. Three, three in base two is actually one remainder one. One plus zero that is one plus one that is two plus one that is three. Three in base two that is actually one remainder one. One plus one that is two. Two plus one that is three. Three plus one that is four. Just want to break it down in simple terms, okay? So four in base two, I can just say two remainder zero, isn't it? So I have zero, so I can just leave. Let me just make this as relatable as possible. All right, more video explanation about this concept has been well positioned, right, in the topic by topic video. So let me just bring this up, all right? So remember, you can't have two in base two. I'm just trying to relate this with you. So I have two plus one, that is three. Three plus zero, that is three. So three in base two, that is one, remainder one, right? So one plus one, that is two. Two in base two, that is one, remainder zero, right? So I have zero, then the one that is remaining. So yeah, I have one zero one zero one one in base two. All right, or you can use the other method. Okay, this is actually thirteen. If you use the expansion method, that is, this is actually thirteen in base two, right? In base ten, rather, this is actually twenty three in base ten, and this is seven in base ten. So if you add this up, it should give you forty three. So forty three in base ten is the same thing as one zero one zero one one in base two. So let's go back to the screen to select the correct option. 101011 base 2. So option C is the correct option. Question 2. If 1 to 5 base x equals 20 base 10, find x. So generally, when it comes to number bases, okay, so you can see the highest number I have here is 5. Okay, so the base here should not be base 5. It should, be, it should not be base 5. Something higher than the value I have here. So you start from 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But that is not the target question, right? And the target question is just to tell us, okay, in what base we want to 5, okay, when expressed in base 10, we equal 20. All right, so let's do that together. So 1 to 5 base x equals 20 in base 10. All right, so let's solve this. 1 to 5 base x equals 20 in base 10. Base 10 is the applicable base that we work in, okay, every day. Okay, day by day. All right, so this is base x for them. All right, so this is 0, 1, 2. So that will be 1 times x raised to power 2, added 2. 2 times x raised to power 1, added 2. 5 times x raised to power 0 equals 20. 20 is already in base 10, so we don't need to carry out expansion. So I have 1 times x squared, I have x squared, plus 2 times x, I have x. All right, x, please. All right, plus x raised to the power 0, that is 1, times 5, I have 5, equals 20. So, if I bring in 20, so I have x squared plus x, right, plus 5, minus 20, equals 0. So, that should be x squared plus x, plus 5 minus 20, that is actually minus 15, equals 0. Okay, so right here, we can factorize right factorization so in factorization what will be the factors here we're actually looking for something that we can 
walk around with here and that should be oh two times x that is 2x sorry about the omission place 2x so i should have 2x here so the factors here should be um that should be yes that should be plus 5 and minus 3 plus 5 and minus 3 so i should have x squared plus 5x minus 3x minus 15 equals 0. all right so you can check that out plus 5 minus 3 that will give you plus 2 plus plus times minus that is minus 5 times 3 that is 15 you can see that so that's how you know your factor so i can still go down further but i'll just skip this part also if you want to understand the concept of um, factorization better you can also check the link in the description below for the topic by topic video explanation they are well explained with examples all right so right from here i can determine that the factors here of these particular equations the factors are x plus 5 right and x plus x minus 3 isn't it x plus 5 and x minus 3 plus 5 and minus 3 you know that's equals 0 so that means x plus 5 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0 that means x equals minus 5 or x equals plus 3 once they go outside okay so we can use minus 5 as a base negative base all right at least for our level here yeah? then you can see this is what we are going for so definitely our x is base 3 so we know that 1 to 5 in base 3 equal 20 in base 10 so x is actually 3 so jeremy has to go back to the board to select the correct option so that is positioned here yeah? so option b is the correct option question three evaluate this expression okay so if you want to know more about this okay just check the link in the description below for topic by topic explanation from the subject mathematics okay so jeremy has solved this particular question so we have to deal with this in segments numerator first then in denominator then using the concept of board mass okay so board mass you remember board mass this is bracket order division multiplication addition subtraction so bracket order division so numerator this is our numerator right here for the numerator okay so first remember division first so i have three over eight divided by one over two that thing implies 2 over 1, if I change it in these two times, so that would be 3 over 8 times 2 over 1. Right? 2 here 1, 2 here 4. So I have 3 over 4 plus 1 over 2. So the LCM here is actually 4. 4 in 4, that is actually 1, times 3, that is 3, plus 2 in 4, that is 2 times 1 that is 2 so i have 3 plus 2 that is 5 over 4 okay so that's for the numerator then denominator the okay remember bracket order division multiplication so we deal with this first so let me just do it from here 2 year 1 2 year 4 so i have 1 times 1 that is 1 4 times 3 that is 12 so i have 1 over 12 plus what is left 1 over 3 again my house cm is actually 12 12 in 12 that is 1 times 1 that is 1 plus 3 in 12 that is 4 times 1 that is actually 4 so i have 1 plus 4 that is 5 over 12 so numerator you know this is numerator by denominator numerator over denominator or you can say numerator divided by denominator isn't it so numerator is actually 5 over 4 divided by denominator which is 5 over 12 so if i'm changing this to multiplication so that is actually 5 over 4 right times 12 over 5 so 5 year 1 5 year 1 4 year 1 4 year 3 1 times 3 that is 3 over 1 times 1 that is 1 3 over 1 that is actually 3 so if we evaluate this equation we should get 3 when we follow the concept of board mass so let's go back to the screen to secure the value 3 so option d is a valid option 
number four, express one, two, three, four, five, six, two, three significant figures. Okay, significant figures implies that non-zero, like non-zero digits. All right. So, and if you want to do that, you start counting your significance from the left. So, we are told we should express this to three significant figures. Okay, so, from the left, the first three should be one, two, three. From the left, remember that. Even if you are dealing with decimals, as well, you count from the left. Okay, non-zeros. So, one, two, three. But we have certain values afterwards, okay, that we can round up or round down. Okay, so if you look at it from here, we can round up six, right? It will donate one to five to become six. We can also round up five, okay? It will donate it one to four to become five. So if you round up this four that has become five, it can donate one to this three to become four. So remember, we have one, two, three, three significant figures. So that will be one, two, four, right? One, two, four, this will be zero, zero, zero. After they have given out their one. So one, two, four, zero, zero, zero. So we have one, two, four, zero, zero, zero. So option B, the correct option. Question five. Calculate the simple interest on 7,500 for eight years at 5% per annum. So let's go to the whiteboard. Okay, that's our solution platform. So simple interest, that is I. The formula equals principal times rate times time over 100%. So I have I equals the principal is actually 7,500, right? Times the rate is 5% per annum. Right, time to time, okay, we have eight years. That's over 100. As well, you can click on the link description below, right? Right there, you get to subscribe for the topic by topic video lesson. We've also treated this particular topic well. So we have this, 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 this. Okay, so I have 75 times 5 times 8. So 5 times 8, that is actually 40. So that is 40 times 75. So I can do this simply. 75, I can say 75 times 4. I know it is 40, so I'm keeping the zero aside. Okay, let me just keep it somewhere. I'll bring it back. All right, so 75 times 4, that should give me 300, right? So that is actually 300. Then the zero that I skipped somewhere, that's actually 3,000. So the interest on it should be 3,000 naira or 3K if you're on the street. So 3,000 naira. So let's go back to the screen to secure. 3,000 Naira. So option A carries the correct value. Number six. The cost of kerosene per liter increased from 60 Naira to 85 Naira. So what is the percentage rate of increase? So that would just be the actual increase, right? Over the actual, the increase over the actual price multiplied by 100 over 1. So the increase is actually from 60 Naira to 85 Naira. So the difference there is actually 25 Naira. So I have 25 Naira over the actual price, which is actually 60, actually, actually. all right, times 100 over 1. Okay, so this strikes out. Then I can have um, 2 year 5, then 2 right here goes 3. Okay, so 50, uh, 5 times 25, that should uh, count or uh, amount to 75. Yes, not, not 75, please. 125. Yes, 125, rather. 125 divided by 3. So I know 3 year 1, 3 year 4, right? 3 in 5, that goes once, meaning 2. So I have 41 whole number 2 over 3, or I should have 41 whole number, right, over 41.66666, because 2 over 3 is actually 0 0.6. So if I round up, it should come to 42. So the percentage increase is actually 42%. So let's go back to the screen. To select 42%, we have that option A. So option A is the right option. Question 7. Simplify 16 raised to the power minus half times 4 raised to the power minus half times 27 raised to the power 1 over 3. All right, so we know that um, if a number is raised to the power half, that is actually the square root of that number. All right, so 16 raised to the power half, I'm not neglecting the minus sign. 16 raised to the power half actually means the square root of 16, right? Then this minus means 1 over, do we see that? 
times 4 raised to the power half, that is square root of 4, right? Then we have this minus as 1 over times, this is the cube root of this 27 raised to the power 1 over 3. That's actually the cube root of 27. If I add to that, the square root of 27. Okay, do we see that now? So we have times 27, right? Cube root of 27 over 1. There's no minus here. Okay, so let me just position it up so that it can align. Cube root of 27 over 1. So I have 1 over square root of 16, 4 times square root of 4, that is 2, times cube root of 27, that is what number do we multiply to itself or by itself? 3 times, that will give us 27, that's actually 3. 3 times 3, 9 times 3, 27. So that number is 3 over 1. So I have 1 times 1, 1 times 3, that is actually 3 for numerator. Then denominator, 4 times 2, 8 times 1, that is 8. So I have 3 over 8. So let's secure 3 over 8. The options provided, very well option A. Again, so option A is the right option. Do not forget that you can have a Jam CBT simulated experience. All you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the My School website. So right there, you get to download the My School mobile app for your Android devices, or you can check out My School software for your laptop, for your computers, and what have you. So join me as of question eight. If log base x raised to power half raised to power 64 equal 3, find the value of x. Okay, this is definitely a question on indices. If you want to know more about indices, just check the link for topic by topic video explanation. You can subscribe using that link. All right, so we have this right here. This is the base. Okay, so we can move this to this side. So that will be 64 equals x raised to power half, right, raised to power 3. Okay, this is, uh, this is for logarithm, please. This is for logarithm. All right, the, the, we have similar process, right, when it comes to indices as well. So the video too is available for logarithm explanations, examples, questions solved. So we have this. We have to bring this to the same power, right? So what raised to power 3 will give us 64. That is actually 4. Because... 4 times 4, 16, times 4, 64. So we can see we have this right now, isn't it? So I have the power. The power is gone, right? Okay, so what I have left is actually 4 equals x raised to power half. So to remove this power, what do we do? We should square both sides because this actually means square root. This raised to power half means square root. So what I would do is to square both sides. Okay, square cancel square root. So this is 4 raised to power 2 equals x. And that is 4 raised to power 2. That is 4 times 4. That is 16. So 16 equals x. So our x is 16. So let's go back to the screen to secure 16 from the options available. Okay, very well. Option B is the correct option. Do not forget that you just have to hit that like button to always motivate us. Also, click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get alerts immediately we upload the next video content. 9. If 1 plus root 2 over 1 minus root 2 is expressed in the form of x plus y root 2, find the values of x and y. Okay, so let's do this together. So what we need to do here is to rationalize the denominator. So how do we do that? We're going to use the conjugates to multiply both numerator and denominator. So that is 1 plus root 2, right, over 1 minus root 2. Okay, so the conjugate of this is actually 1 plus root 2. All right. Okay, so let's do a multiplication. Let's open up the bracket. So 1 times 1, I have 1, right? I have the plus sign. 1 times root 2 plus root 2, I have plus root 2. Plus root 2 times 1, I have plus root 2. Plus root 2 times plus root 2, that is plus root 4. And square root of 4 is what? 2. 
over 1 times 1, I have 1. 1 times plus root 2, I have plus root 2. Minus root 2 times 1, that is minus root 2. Then I have minus root 2 times plus root 2, that will be minus root 4. Square root of 4 is also 2, once again. So I have this 1 plus 2, that is 3, right? Root 2 plus root 2, that is plus 2 root 2. Okay, just think of your root 2 as x. Okay, so this is x, x. So x plus x, that is 2 x so you can see it here all right just to make this concept relatable as possible all right so i have this to pull off okay so i have over one minus two that is actually minus one okay root two plus root two minus root two that is zero that is just like saying plus x minus x that is zero Okay, so I have it here. So right now, the minus is going to affect what we have upstairs. So that will be minus 3 minus 2 root 2. So this is the solution. So if you are going to identify, you can see the expression. So this is our x, right? And this is our y. So the value of x is minus 3. The value of y is minus 2. Minus 3 minus 2. So let's secure that together. Minus 3, minus 2. Okay. Option A carries the right value. Number 10. If x equals n squared plus 1 such that n equals 0, 2, and 3. Okay. And we have y, the set y equals um, n plus 1 such that n equals 2, 3, and 5. So we should find x intersection y. x intersection y. So we have to bring out the full expression of what we have here. So we are given this formula, okay, n squared plus 1. All right. So that means when n equals 0, what will be the value of x? So when n equals 0, what will be the value of x? N, right so that is 0 raised to power 2 that is 0 plus 1 that is 1 okay do we see that comma remember this formula then when n equals 2 so that is 2 raised to power 2 that is 4 plus 1 that is 5 okay then I have when n is 3 3 raised to power 2 that is 9 plus 1 that is 10 Okay, then let's go for y. All right, so we have it n plus 1. So when n is 2, there will be 2 plus 1, that is 3. Right, okay. I want this to be properly written. Okay, so when n is 3, so 3 plus 1, that is 4. Then I have when n is 5, 5 plus 1, that is 6. Okay, so we are asked to find x intersection y. So that is what can we find, what elements can we find, or what elements can be found here and can also be found here or here to here, right? So let's see, are there any similarity? One, no, five, no. So this is of course an empty set, right? So I can write it this way. If you want to know more about sets, please just click on the subscription link, okay? On our topic by topic video, you will get everything you need from there. So you can write it this way, or you can bring out your expression this way, or you can still write it this way, just to signify an empty or a null set. So this is what we should get. So let's go back to the screen to see if we have any of these expressions laid out there. Okay, so we have it right here. So option C carries the right expression. Right here we have question 11. A bookseller sells mathematics and English books. If 30 customers buy mathematics books and 20 customers buy English books and 10 customers buy the two books. Okay, so how many customers has E or together? Okay, so let's make this happen. So we just have to extract the information supplied, okay, or from the data given. All right, so we know a bookseller sells mathematics and English books. Okay, so 30 customers go for math. Right, so number of maths 
There's actually 30, isn't it? Number of English is actually giving us 20, right? Number of maths and English, that's actually 10. So what we need to do is we have to be very precise. Okay, so how many but just mathematics alone? Mathematics alone, okay, that will be number of mathematics but not English. So we know this is actually 30 minus the number that for both, that is actually 20. So out of the 30 people that came for math books, okay, 20 of them only bought math books, not English included. Okay, so let's start out the next one. Now, English only, right? Not math, just English only. That will of course be 20 minus 10. That is 10. Okay, so, all right, we have this. All right, so the universal said, so we asked how many customers as he all together. Okay, so all together will just be our universal set, okay? Or you can use this expression, whichever one works for you, right? Okay, or this, any one of the two. So that will be math only, that's 20, plus English only, that's 10, plus both, that's 10, plus um, customers that are not buying your the subjects, that's zero, subject books. Okay, that will be 20 plus 10, that is 40, plus 10, that is 50, plus zero, that is 50. Total number of customers, 50. So let's see if we have 50 provided. Yes, that's very sure. We have that with option C. So option C is good to go. 12 on board, on screen. Okay, so make Q the subject of formula when L equals 4 over 3M square root of P, Q. All right, so I've replicated this question here. So the first thing we can do is to cross multiply this to the side. All right, so if I do that, I should have 3L equals 4M root P, Q. Okay, then divide both sides by 4M. All right, so I should have root P, Q, right, equals 3L over 4 m Okay, so what can I do to eliminate the square root? I square both sides. Three L square means three square L square. So three square is actually nine. L square is still L square over 4 square is 16, m square is just m square. All right, so right here I have to divide both sides by 1 over p or by p. So that implies that 1 over p right times pq equals 1 over p times 9 l square over 16 m square. So this cancels this, right? So I have q equals this. So Q equals 1 over P, 9 L square, 16 M square. Or you can have it this way. You say 9 L square, right, over 16 M square P. All right. So let's confirm our solution. So I have 9 L square, 16 M square P, option A, so option A carries the right value. 13. If 2x squared minus kx minus 12 is divisible by x minus 4, find the value of k. All right, so I'm just going to use a single method to solve this question. All right, so is divisible by x minus 4. This is your law. Okay, so that implies x equals 4. Mm -hmm. Or you can add plus 4 to both sides. So we just, anywhere we see x, we substitute with 4. So that is 2 into bracket 4 raised to power 2 minus k into bracket 4 minus 12 equals 0. So I have 4 raised to power 2, that is actually 16 times 2, 32 minus 4k, right? Then I have minus 12 equals 0. So I have 32 minus 12, that is actually 20. 
If I have minus 4k, right, plus 20 equals 0. So I can send 4k outside. So I have 20 equals plus 4k. Dividing both sides by 4, right? So the value of k is 5. You can check that out if you slot it right here. So let's go back to the screen. 5. Option B is the right option. 14. Factorize completely 4x plus 3y. Okay, close your parentheses. Then we have square minus 3x minus 2y. Then we have root power 2 of square. All right, so I have it right here. So we just have to use differences of square. Okay, so we identify this as A, this entire bracket as A, then this, the contents here, as B. All right, so remember we have squared, that is A squared, that is B squared. All right, okay, so I can just write it out as a record that A equals 4x plus 3y, right, and B is 3x minus 2y. So differences of square implies that a square minus b square, right? So this is what we have, okay? a square minus b square, all right, equals a plus b, then a minus b. So you can see this is our a, it has square on it. This is it here, this is our b. With the square on it. So a square minus b square, this is a minus sign here, because a plus b, then a minus b. So let's plot in the value. So what is a? This is the first thing we are looking at. So a is, okay, let me write it here. Right. Okay, so what is our a? Our a is 4x plus 3y. Then we have this big plus. All right, then our b. Okay, that is 3x minus 2y. Okay, then we have the next parenthesis. Then we have a, which is 4x plus 3y. Then we have the minus. Okay, I'm going to make it obvious. Then the b, which is 3x minus 2y. So I'm just going to... Um, boycott this long process. So minus times plus 3x, that is minus 3x. Okay, minus times minus 2y, that will be plus 2y. So let me just I'll make this process a little faster. Okay, okay, that's quite distant. Okay, let me just rewrite this. So that will be minus 3x plus 2y. Okay, so I have 4x plus 3x, that is 7x, right, plus 3y minus 2y, that is plus y. Okay, then I have the next parenthesis, 4x minus 3x, that is actually x, right, then I have plus 3y plus 2y, that is plus 5y. So any of the parentheses that come forward, they are good to go, that is first. Okay, so we have x plus 5y, 7x plus y. x plus 5y, 7x plus y. Okay, I think that is correctly placed. Option A, so option A has the right expression. Kindly use the link in the description below to ask your question. So, how does this work? Very easy. Okay, once you click on the link, it's going to get you to the My School website. Right there, you get to ask your questions and interact with our wonderful solution providers. So, join me as a of question 15. So if x minus 3 is directly proportional to the square of y and x as a value of 5, y as a value of 2, find x when y equals 6. Okay, this is definitely an expression around variation. Okay, so if you look at this, we are told that x minus 3, right, is directly proportional to the square of y. So mathematically, I should have this this way, okay, equals k, this is a constant, so if we had to look for k, that would just be k equals x minus 3 over y squared. So let's do that first, so that means k equals, 
What's our x? So, and x is 5 when y equals 2. Right? 5 minus 3, that is 2. Over 2 raised to the power 2, that is 4. So that is 1 over 2. So that is the value of k. Okay. <laughs> F, okay. So we are asked to find x when y equals 6. So that is x minus 3 equals ky squared. So right now, that is, if I send this here, that will be x equals ky squared plus 3, right? So my k is 1 over 2 times y. When now y is actually 6. So 6 raised to the power 2, that is 36, right? Added to 3. So I have 2 year 1, 2 year, 2 in 36, that should be 18, yeah? That should be 18. Okay, so 18 plus 3, that is 21. So the value of x when y is 6 is actually 21. So let's go back to the screen to select 21. Okay, option B. So option B is the valid option. Please, if you have interesting comments or solutions you'd like to share with us, please, we are so much attentive. All you just need to do is to kindly use the comment section below, indicate the question number and the explanation or solution or steps you'd like to share. 16. If P varies inversely as the square of Q and P equals 8 when Q equals 4. So find Q when P equals 32. Still a question on variation, specifically inverse variation. Okay, so I have if P varies inversely as the square of Q, P varies inversely as the square of Q. So that is P equals K right over q square all right so that means k equals if i cross multiply equals p q square and that implies that k is actually equals so what's our p okay and p equals 8 when q equals 4. p equals 8 and q equals 4. right that will be 8 times 4 raised to the power 2 that is 16. All right, 8 times 16, I think that should give us number 128, I suppose, yeah. Okay, so we have this value. So we are now asked to find Q when P is 32. So that means we are asked to find Q when P is 32. So how do we do that? Very easy as well. So we know that from here, K equals P Q squared. So right now we are looking for Q. That implies I divide both sides by P, right? So that means Q squared equals K over P. To remove this, we square root both sides. So that still implies that Q equals square root of K, right, over P. You can split this root K over root Q. If you want to know more about salt, please check the link in the description below for topic by topic video explanation. You can subscribe there and you will learn everything you need to know regarding salt. So we have this. So we asked to find Q, right? And we know the value of K is actually 128 over when P is giving us 32. So 32 year 1, 32 year, that should give me, I think, um, somewhat around 4. Okay, yeah, that should be 4. But we can do something a little bit easier. That's 4. But we can still do it this way, 128 over 32. Okay, so we can do something like this. Let's say, um, yeah, let's say 4 year 8. 4 in 12, that is 3. 4 in years, that is 2. 8 year 1, 8 year 4. Okay. All right, so actually you can punch your calculator and get your answer. But I'm trying to work without 1. So I have square root of 4, that is 2. So that means I know Q is 2. So Q is actually 2 when P is 32. So let's go back to the screen to select 2. Okay, plus or minus 2, you know, the square root, the roots. Okay, so option D is the right option. 17, find the range of values of X which satisfy 
the inequalities. 4x minus 7 is less than or equals to 3x and 3x minus 4 is less than or equals to 4x. So let's do this together. All right, so I have 4x minus 7 is less than or equals to 3x, right? Then I have 3x minus 4 is less than or equals to 4x. Okay, so let's carry this process, okay, to fruition. So I should have this. Okay, so what do we do? We collect like terms. All right, we send this term here, we send this here. So that'll be 4x minus 3x <clears throat> greater than 7, okay? And for this other side, I can send this outside as well, whichever way. So I should have minus 4 is less than 4x minus 3x. So 4x minus 3x, that is actually x, right? And we have minus 4 is less than or equals to 4x minus 3x as well. That is still x. Okay, so if I want to combine this, I should have um, minus 4 is less than x. Minus 4 is less than or equals to x, rather. And x is less than or equals to 7. So if I want to list out the values of x, all right, the range of values of x, that should include minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then, and 7. So that's if you are required to list them out. So, but this is the expression minus 4 is less than x, less than or equals to x. x is less than or equals to 7. So let's go back to the screen to sort this out. Minus 4 is less than x. s is also less than or equals to 7, please. Less than or equals to. Okay, so option A as the right expression. So option A is good to go. So we've come to the end of this video segment, but we have the next segments coming up. Please do not go anywhere. Remember to always hit the like button. Also, do not forget the subscribe button and always, always tap on the notification for you to get alerts immediately we upload the next video just for you.